Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. If you desire to intimately connect with yourself, significant other, children, family, friends, community, and higher power, then this is the show for you. We explore intimate topics, inspiring life stories, spirituality, and insightful tips on strengthening relationships. The show is hosted by Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Let's get this episode of the Bringing Intimacy Back show started. We share with you today the secret power to intimacy to create the life you love or love the life you create. Now here is your host, Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. How are you doing, Coach K? I am doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Yes, yes. It's a um, back in this well in this area right now. We're all going back to school and getting all this stuff ready and prepared. Yep, we will be back to school on Monday, and this August school date is just it's not working for me. But it's okay. It's happening, so I guess I got to live with it. <laughs> Yes, yes. The summer just went by so fast. And then with so much heat, you know, um, yes, it's it's amazing um, <clears throat> that school is already getting started. But it's a good thing, you know, and yeah. I'm really excited about today's topic because it's it's kind of like it's back to the basics. Yes. I think more of us need to get back to the basics so we can just start things fresh. <laughs> Remember where 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 we need to ground ourselves in. So I'm excited about today's topic. Yes, yes. And this show is about back to the basics of genuine love. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes people make love so complicated. Yes, just like life. (laughs) Just use it as the four letters that it is. Nice and simple. Not a whole lot of consonants, no a whole lot of vowels. It's just, it is what it is. Right, right. And I truly believe if there was more love in this world, you know, there'd be, I don't know, maybe I'm optimistic. It's just more peaceful and more, <laughs> yes, definitely. And I think, how can I put it, with love, that not only inspires you in your relationship with others, but it also inspires you in your relationship with self. Mm, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Around your love and you, and it can only blossom. Right. And as we know on this show, every month we highlight a new um, nonprofit or a nonprofit that um, we see are doing great things. And one profit, one nonprofit that's doing a lot of charitable thing, it's called Better Tomorrow. And bettertomorrow.org is a nonprofit, a charitable organization that help people really start to learn to really love themselves, how it helps people to overcome adversity, you know, and tragedies and create more prosperity in their life for themselves and their next generation. And it's bettertomorrows.org. Yeah, the name alone says it all. Yes, definitely, because sometimes it's sad when people don't think that they have a better tomorrow, they get, you know, a sense of hopelessness which is the opposite of love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm so excited that we have someone that's going to come in and talk to us about going back to the basics. Yeah. Even though it may be scary to, to go back there, because when you go back to the basics, you have to, you do have to face some things that you just kind of ignored when you try to overcomplicate it, but it's important. So I'm excited to hear from our guest today. <laughs> yes, yes. So when we be, when we come back, we're going to introduce you to a wonderful gentleman who is going to teach us um, about love and going back to the basics. We'll be back in a moment. Improving intimacy everyday expressions is all about you and your partner opportunities for intimacy are scattered endlessly within every second of life you create together with your partner everyday expressions will educate you and open your eyes to just how great your relationship could be 
with a little TLC. Improving intimacy everyday expressions provides a true baseline for the strength in your relationship you've been looking for. Available in Kindle, Audible, and paperback. Welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. I'd like to welcome Paul Solman um, and his role of love. Uh, yes, welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. April. Thank you, Coach K. Pleasure to be here. Yes, yes. So um, a little bit about Paul is Paul is going to come and talk to us about love. And I guess since in his childhood, he had basically the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. He had a mission in life, hey, that I want to do and help others learn what about love. And so, yes, he has this whole thing called role of love, which I'm so excited. Um, what we ask all our guests when we first get started on the show is intimacy, because our show is about intimacy. How do you define intimacy and how does that impact love? I think intimacy is just those feelings of kindness and care, and, and it almost uh, cooperates with love. It's just, it's almost a byproduct of love. Just that kindness and, and that you express one to another just leads to, would lead to intimacy, which is would be more a deeper sense of, of togetherness, a deeper sense of oneness. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that how you um, tie those things together. Yes. Yeah. What, um, what makes you make that switch from, you know, many times people get stuck in the trauma of their past, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and you have moved past that and even tried to help others. What made that transition for you? I think that um, understanding kind of where I was uh, really helped me make the transition. And I think that a lot of people in a lot of things don't understand where they are, where they might be on a spectrum. And I, I like to illustrate a spectrum. Just I, the other day I was out walking in, in my neighborhood and I found a stick. The stick it didn't have any bark on it, just like this. And this is the stick. And, and on one, this one side, it's really, really nice. It's nice and smooth. But on the other side of the stick, you got some pointed areas and some just some places where there could have been some other sticks pointed out of there. I call this the naughty side of the stick. So it's a nice and naughty stick. I'm sure Santa Claus has a stick just like that. If it's not a list, it might be a stick. So, so when, when you discover, Dr. April and, and Coach K, when you discover where you're at on the stick, that's when you can, you've got a decision. You, there's three things you could do. Stay where you're at go to the naughty side or go to the nice side. And I think that has to do with a lot of things. You could do it with vocabulary. You could do it with, with, with a lot of different situations. So for me, it was for it was anger. On the anger or on the naughty side of the stick is a kind of a culture of anger. That culture includes the humor. It includes vocabulary. It includes the words, all the, all the things that you say. The nuances, your mannerisms, includes all that. It's a culture all by itself. To break out of that culture is really, really hard unless you learn different patterns or, in my case, learn the love languages. And so the opportunity I found to learn about the love languages goes back about 15 years when I was trying to, um, you know, I've had failed, a couple of failed, failed marriages and I was, I was lonely. My sister introduced me to her neighbor and we got to, got to know one another. It was time to take this neighbor up to my brother for big brother approval. I'm number 10 of 11 children. So you always have to always have to have big brother approval. <laughs> so my parents liked intimacy. I mean, you find something that you like, you just keep doing it, I guess. That's why they had 11 children. Yes. So, so, so we go in, My right when we go in my brother's house, my sister-in-law pulls this woman aside and says, the only emotion that the Zolman family learned growing up was anger. At first I said, uh-uh, and denied it. Then it made me mad. <laughs> and I thought, huh, wow. If there's any opportunity, now's the time. Now's the time to change that perception for the whole Zolman family. You know, I had a grandfather that in, um, in 
Indiana had nine children back in the late 1800s, nine children. And his, after that ninth child, his wife passed away. I don't know if it was part of childbirth or what, but she passed away and he was totally distraught. So distraught that he decided he would sell the farm and sell all the equipment and everything. At the auction, when people came to the auction and bought something, he would say, would you like this child? And would you like this child? Would you like this child? Would you like this child? And he gave all the children away. Wow. Except for one. One named Benjamin. He took Benjamin with him to Montana, married another woman, had 10 more children, of which my father was number number six out of that 10 children. When my father, my father was born in 1922. When my father was just 10 years old, this grandfather passed away. So it's 1932. Not only do you have abandonment of all 19 children, but now you have economic issues. You've got financial problems and you've got all these other things piled on one on top of another. And it's just very stressful. So in that stressful situation was my father growing up. He didn't make it past eighth grade. So at, with just an eighth grade education, he became a truck driver and then learned the diesel mechanics after that. So we moved to moved our family to, to central Montana and, and uh, raised, raised us as kids. When we were raised, what would happen, and what I really appreciate my father for, for his example of this, every single Friday, he took my mother out on a date. Didn't matter. Every single Friday, he did that. And I could tell that they were trying to develop that relationship that would lead to possible intimacy within, within our own family. But on that Friday, it was the venue that was the problem. And it was what happened in that venue. It was always the Maverick Bar, always drinking involved. And then, as as you know, with couples, when they get back together after a, an absence, they're going to say, well, how was your week? And how was your week? And blah, blah, blah. And they're just going to communicate back and forth. Well, from my mother's side of the view, I, I can imagine that she just disclosed what happened, how the kids were and everything. And based on that, we either got the belt or a spanking or some nice time with the father. Most of the time, I remember the belt and the spanking. You remember pain a whole lot more than you remember yes. anything else. Yes. So one time I just remember being black and blue from that for more than three weeks. So, so my sister-in-law, when I took this lady to the house, was she was absolutely dead on. I thought, I've got to change that perception. I've got this opportunity now. So I started reading the color code, and I started reading the five love languages. And I really liked the principles of the five love language, thought they reconciled to the life of Jesus Christ, and that resonated with me. Right. And I thought, that, thought I, but I just didn't get it. I didn't get the application. I thought, you send five love languages? It looks like 10 to me. It's like five you send out and five you're supposed to get back. And that looks like 10. And I could not get the direction down. So so I'm, I'm thinking, just meditating on it. How, how am I going to really understand this? Because remember where I came from. Right. If, if this is love, it doesn't sound like love to me. If I'm supposed to guess, Dr. April or Coach K, what your love language is and cater to that, it's like a dutiful, dutiful thing, and I'm. And that doesn't sound like love. It sounds like more uh, maybe a, a manipulation, or even, I mean, it just doesn't sound like love to me. I mean, I, what? It, who am I to say what love was at the time? I mean, I just I came from abuse. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to know what love is? So, but it didn't sound like that. I thought, hmm, I like the principles. I wonder how I can in incorporate them into my own life. And so I contacted Dr. Chapman just wrote them an email and, and asked him, are you licensing those icons that you have for each one of the love languages? And he said, no, I'm not doing that. And so I, I went to a, a local attorney and said, told him what I wanted to do. He said, theory is not copyrightable. Right. Application is. So the happy times I remember with, a fam with our family when I'm growing up was with games. We'd play games and we'd kill one another. And it was great. And it was fun. And it was just taught to be a, a fun thing to just strategize and do that sort of thing. And wow. People, so, yeah. So you took the five love languages and you put it into a game format. I did. So I, so I put it into a game format. 
you can see it right here. It's a it's a dice. Okay. So on the die, I've got the the love languages. There you can see the gifts. Right. The touch. Uh, the words. Right. So how do you use the die? Time, and then and then the service. Yes. So, how do you use it? So the only way you use the die is just very simple. Two instructions. You roll the die every day. That's the love language you practice all day that day, giving it away. So what I found through this study, Dr. April, is that is that that's the only thing that you have control over, giving the love away. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't bid it to come my way. I can't force anyone to love me. That's that's not love either. But I can give it away, and then I can react when it comes my way. What I found that over over a thirty day period of rolling the die is that I became familiar with all five love languages. After reading the book, the five love languages four, four or five times, I did. I, you could pay me a if you offered me a million dollars. I still couldn't name all five love languages. It wasn't part of me. Right. By rolling the die and giving it away, doing it, it actually became part of me. I knew all of them, forward and backwards. I became what I like to call a love language linguist. Okay, awesome. I knew all those love language. Part of the best part of that is that it gave me the eyes to see or the, the improve my vision that I could see it when it comes my way. Right. Yeah, and I was just thinking, and you're putting that intention. Absolutely. So Dr. Chapman would have you love your significant other. And I think that in unintentionally, that creates this little pity party that says, well, I told you how to love me. Why well, come you're not doing it? And you can get down to that pity party. This is totally different. Mm -hmm. That you're just intentionally giving it away without any expectation of it coming back. But trusting that it's a boomerang, it's going to come back after many days. Just in contrast that, like on the naughty and nice stick, contrast that with anger. You send out anger, mm -hmm. you're getting an immediate return on your investment. People, you're going to make somebody's day miserable and then they're going to go around and make somebody else's day miserable and you just sent that out. Contra uh, with love, it could happen the opposite way. Right. So the Carl, when you roll the dice and you get, let's say you get words of affirmation. Yes. Um, do you roll it for each person in your family or you just focus on your, your wife? But I know with the five love languages, it's also with children your family. So I'm just curious if you got words of affirmation, do you do it for everybody in your, how does this, that process usually works? So that's a really good question. So, so when, when it was created, uh, the five love languages was identified, the theory, it was Dr. Chapman suggested for significant others, except, except I couldn't do that. I was single at the time that I created this. So because of that, because I was single, I had to express love to everyone. And so I've kept it that way. It's to everyone. Mm -hmm. If you think of, think of it, uh, if you're not around your significant others all the time. So in fact, what it becomes is a part-time job. I, oh, I'm, I'm going to work now. No, I don't have to love anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm at work. And then you come back to your significant other and say, oh, I, I forgot to love. I mean, there's, and you just it's just this, this little confusion of, well, am I loving or am I not? I'm not with my significant significant others at work, so do I have to love? I mean, and it just it's just confusing to me. It was to me. So I just stabilize that by saying just you're watching all day long, Dr. April, for opportunities to love everyone, but you're watching for the opportunities to love in the way that you rolled that particular day. You're trying, and you multiple times, you're sending out that type of love or that genre of love. What you're really watching for is for them to light up. When they light up, that's probably what is close to their primary love language. No longer do you have to put a, say, hold on, hold on. Let me give you this survey so I know how to love you. You don't have to do that anymore. So you, can, you don't have to, that's not how you find out their, their primary love language. When they light up, that's when you know it. Mm, that Hello. is. Yes, yes. Different. Yeah, it makes sense to, to do it 
through across the board um, versus segmented. And that's how you you take it back to the basics and you make it a part of your being. So it really makes sense. Absolutely. It's part of your disposition. It's a it's a new way to look at it gives you those new eyes. You know, becoming a love language linguist, you you want to put that on your resume. Everybody's going to want it's a sexy title. Everybody wants it. I mean, they want that on the resume. What happens is that you see that on the resume as an employer, you're going to say, what the heck is a love language linguist? And you're going to say, well, I just love people. That employer wants their customers loved. They want a loving environment in the workplace. Your resume is going to rise to the top. Yep, because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. But thank you so much. So I know you've written um, books about it. Tell us about your books. So I, I wrote a book called called The Role of Love. And this is a kind of the backstory of how it all came came together. But it also includes some other anecdotes about different tests I, I did it with. I did it with a family one time. They had five children. And the youngest was four years old. And so the four-year-old rolls a die and all of, all of a sudden he rolls physical touch. And he's jumping up and down, pumping his fist and saying, yes, physical touch, physical touch. And immediately he goes and beats up on his brothers. <laughs> and so the, so the mother has to suppress the laughter and say, no, this is appropriate physical touch. And it became what, what I like to call a teaching moment. And that's what we're looking for is those teaching moments. How do we teach these children what appropriate love is? And back to the basics, how, how do we just instill this in them? And I thought maybe in the school system where maybe uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, you'll notice that on this die, there are no words. So if I say the word elephant, you're not seeing in your mind E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T. You're seeing the elephant. Yeah. You're seeing, seeing the animal itself. So these pictures actually become what I'd like to call a memory hook. They're in your mind. You roll the die at the beginning of the day. It's in your mind that you're watching for those opportunities all day long. In a school situation, a classroom situation, roll it in the morning. First thing in the morning, it takes two seconds, maybe up to a minute to explain what we're doing that day class. At the end of the day, the last 10 to 15 minutes, there's really unproductive time anyway. Those kids are rambunctious. They've been there all day. They're just anxious. It's time, The bell's going to ring. Even if they got in trouble, they're not really going to get in trouble. What teacher's going to stay after school with them? You know, it's just not going to happen. So let's turn that into productive time and have them recorded in a journal. So I've, I have a companion book that's a journal that, oh. show, that shows what you rolled that day, opportunities you saw to love in that way that day, then what you did about those opportunities. So all of a sudden, now these kids are accountable for their actions all day, every day. And they have to write about it at the end of the day. That's the good part. The second good part is that who wouldn't have loved to have a journal of love from your first grade class, from right. your second, second grade class, or your third grade class. I mean, this is just a tool for those teachers to tamp down the misbehaving, make not, it's not their responsibility to control all the misbehaving. Now it's the child's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I've got, uh, in my city, I've got a, a couple of, of, of sponsors that one, one is uh, Yogurt Land, a Yogurt Land franchise, franchisee, has said that if they record a journal entry for 25 days in a month, which is almost every day, if they do that, they'll get 10 ounces of free yogurt. Oh, that is wonderful and inspiring, so, definitely. But if they'll only do 15 days, so if they only do it a little bit of the time, they'll get five ounces. So <laughs> from 15 to 24 ounces, they still, or 24 days, they still get the five ounces of yogurt. So right. there's an incentive for the, for the kids, incentive that they like and, it, and but it, but it just will help in in tamping down the behavior forget about the bully and that's not even part of the program and if you're even on the program you're not even going there you're not saying what's wrong with billy what you know what's there not to like about billy you're you're just looking at what's good about that person what can i love about that person and that's the new mindset wow thank you so much paul for i mean um you're product and of course the the journal and the book that you know goes with it it's not only for couples 
but you're also expanding it outside of, you know, the household, which in really we're all connected. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And making, you know, um, cultural and, you know, city wide changes, which is amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. So if people are wanting to, um, get in touch with you how do they go about doing that so they can they can buy the the journal the book and the die on my website it's called rolloflove.com and it's r o l e so r o l e changes you within even though you r o l l the die outside of you it changes with it changes you within so a little play on words there um, if they are just listening to the podcast and they like listening to um, books on on tape or audibles, they can find the audible, but they'll need to go to amazon.com. Now, you don't want to type in role of love because you're going to get love this, love this, love that, love a million things, and you're not going to find role of love on that. So just type in my name, and it'll bring it right up, and it's the role of love audible is available on, on Amazon. All right. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. All that you do. Thank you, Dr. April. Thank you, Coach K. It's yes. been, a pleasure. been a pleasure. Thank you. This has been the Bringing Intimacy Back. We're going to take a short commercial and we'll be right back. Vacation Counseling wants to invite you to the Christian Couples Retreat in 2024 in beautiful Bradington, Florida. Dr. April, intimacy and sex therapist and author of Improving Intimacy, and Dr. Jason from the Hit TV series on TLC, 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort, will be helping us to love each other the way God intended us to love. Visit vacationcounseling.com or call 239-565-6921 and get registered today. All right. Wow. That was just so powerful. Oh, okay. Your, mic, your microphone is uh, off, okay. But yeah, sorry about that. But that was just so powerful that um, what Paul talked about in the sense of the role of love and then actually how he utilizes that not only in helping couples connect, but also to just um, putting it in the basics of elementary schools. That, yes. that piece is everything. Having, um, you know, five kids come through the school system, one that just went from elementary into middle school. I know, and, and even if you don't have children, if you've ever been around a child in a school system or you've been to school yourself, you know the significance of having this human piece added to the classroom, how it can change many things around us because just like Whitney Houston sung, I believe the children are our future. They are. They grow up to be either amazing adults or non-productive adults. So to be able to get them in their most sponge state. I was just thinking that sponge. <laughs> yes. Is everything. Because that's all children want is to receive and give love. They are the basics. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And like you said, that sponge, they can soak up so much more about what love really is at the basic level than sometimes, yeah, adults who are struggling in a marriage. And so if you learn about it so young in life and you learn to give. Yeah, absolutely. And then you create your boundaries and then you're able to balance that moving forward. So this is a great conversation. Yes, definitely. So um, what's coming up? We have many, many other great conversations that will be coming up. So on August the 24th, we have How Food Fuels Intimacy. That will be with Dr. April and myself. On August the 31st, we have Overcoming Sexual Pain with Mary Grimberg. On September the 7th, we have Dating Theory, Let It Be. And that's going to be with Dr. April and a special co-host. Uh, and then on September the 14th, we have Nerves of Steel with Linda Steele. We have on September 21st, Why Men Marry the Next Girl. And that's going to be with Dr. April and myself. So we have some amazing shows that are coming up. So excited about it. 
Yes, yes, definitely. And I look forward to that. So and if you're out there listening and you really like us, please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And um, I just want to give another call to action. If you're out there listening and you really like bringing intimacy back, definitely go onto our website. And you're like, what is intimacy? Well, we have some quizzes for you to take. And if you sign up and take a quiz, you're going to get some surprises. So maybe some coupons to some of these awesome retreats that we have coming up in the future. Yes. All right, then. Thank you guys so much for listening. And we'll see you guys next week. This has been the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. You can also find us at bringingintimacyback.com, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Dr. April Brown's seventh book series, Improving Intimacy, is now on Amazon. We'll see you next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Don't forget to follow, share, and subscribe.